Last time around, we found that the probability density function is equal to this expression, where w is given by this expression over here. And so now we move on to part d. And for this video, I'm going to focus on finding these three terms over here. And I'm going to save this for our next video, because this is calculating this is going to be quite a bit of a pain. And uh, because we are already given the answer for the expected value of p squared, I will also find these two values over here. So in this video, it will be focused on finding these values, and then the expected value of momentum squared will be left for the next video. So let's start with finding the expected value of x. So the expected value of x is just equal to the equal to x multiplied by the probability density function. So this is the definition of what an expected value is. So I can just pull out all these constants, and then you can see that we arrive at this integral where we have x multiplied by e to the power of negative 2w squared x squared dx. And then you can see that this is actually an odd function. So if you recall, an odd function means a function where if you substitute an f of negative x, this is equal to negative f of x. And you can see that it is true for this function over here. So let's say f of x is equal to this expression. So f of negative x is equal to negative x e to the power of negative 2w squared negative x squared. So after the square, this negative sign just goes away. So I can just write it out as x squared. And so we have negative x times e to the power of negative w squared x squared. And you can see that this expression here is actually x, uh, f of x. And we have this negative sign over here due to the negative sign from over here. So we get negative of f, f of x. So you can see that this term here that we're integrating satisfies this condition which means that this term is an odd function. And because the bounds are, are uh, symmetrical, so you're going from negative infinity to infinity, that's why this whole integral is going to be equal to zero. So you can kind of imagine it as something like this. So you can visualize it graphically. So if a function is an odd function, then it will look uh, symmetrical. So let's say the function looks something like this. So if I integrate from a point negative a all the way to a, uh, the contributions will just cancel each other out. So this part is going to be negative, this part is going to be positive, and if you add them together, it's just going to be equal to zero. So that's what's happening here for this integral. So this whole thing here is equal to zero. So the expected value of x is equal to zero. So this is our first answer. And knowing that the expected value of x is equal to zero, we can quickly find the expected value of momentum by using this formula, which Griffiths proves in chapter one. So the, uh, the derivative of 0, that's just equal to 0. So we have m times 0, so of course this is equal to 0. So the expected value of momentum is 0. So we have, that's our second answer. And now we move on to the expected value of x squared. And once again, we will apply the definition. So we have x squared multiplied by the probability density function. And then we're just going to pull the constants out first, as always. And then you see that we arrive at this integral that is that seems kind of tricky to solve. And if you've done some of the problems uh, in the previous, some of the previous problems, you might actually remember encountering integrals that look like this. So we've actually dealt with, in previous videos, we've actually dealt with integrals that look like this before. But I'll go through the method on how you can deal with these integrals again. So in order to solve an integral like this, you need to use a trick. So note that, first of all, that e to the power of negative kx squared dx is equal to the square root of pi divided by k. So it's equal to the square root of pi times k to the power of negative 1 half. So this is the Gaussian integral. You can use a double integral to prove this, so I'm not going to go through that proof. But we can go from this result uh, to finding what the integral is if we add an x squared in front of this integral. So you can see that if we add an x squared in front of this integral, this form actually is exactly the same as this integral over here, where our k is equal to 2w squared. So if we can find what this is equal to, we can just apply the formula to this integral, and then we would have found our expected value of x squared. So the way we find this is that we will use this result over here. And the trick is to differentiate both sides by k. So if I differentiate the left-hand side by k, so d dk, 
you can see that this is an integral in terms of dx, so I can just move this de uh, derivative inside the integral. So I'll be differentiating this term over here. And then this, since this is an e to the power of something, I just retain this term, e to the power of negative kx squared dx. And then I'm going to need to use the chain rule. So I need to differentiate this exponent by k. And that will give us negative x squared. So this negative x squared is this d dk of negative kx squared. So we just get rid of the k, and then we get negative x squared. And on the right-hand side, I have the square root of pi. And then since I'm taking the derivative with respect to k, I get something like this. So I'm just using the power rule. So I can see that you can see that I can get rid of the negative sign on both sides. And then you'll see that we arrive at exactly what we originally set out to achieve. So this integral here over here is equal to the square root of pi divided by 2 divided by k square root of k. So that's just k to the power of negative 3 over 2. And so we can apply this formula directly to this integral over here. Because you can see that this form is exactly the same as this, where k is equal to 2w squared. So now we can apply this formula. So for this term over here, it just becomes 2 divided by the square root of pi times w. And then we apply this formula. So the square root of pi divided by 2. And then we have k, which is equal to 2w squared. And then another square root of k is so the square root of 2w squared. And then here you can see we can do a bit of simplifications. So the pi, uh, square root of pi, they cancel out. The square root of 2, they cancel out. There's a square root of w squared, so this just becomes a w, which cancels out with this. So in the end, you're left with 1 divided by 2 times 2w squared, so 4w squared. And so this is your answer. This is the square root, uh, This is the expected value of x squared. So now, at this point, we have already found these three expressions over here. So I'm going to skip this for now. I'm going to leave this for the next video because it's uh, it's going to take a bit of uh, it's going to take more time to derive this because the mathematics is going to get a bit more complicated. But since we're given the answer for the expected value of p squared, we can just go ahead and find these two values first. So the standard deviation of x. So the standard deviation of x that's just equal to the square root of taking x squared, taking the expected value minus the expected value of x squared. So that's just the, this is just the formula for variance, and then if you take the square root, that's the standard deviation. So just now we found that this is equal to 1 divided by 4 w squared, and then we found that this expected value of x is equal to 0. So this is just equal to 1 divided by 2 w. So this is your answer. This is your expected value of x. And then you do something similar for the expected value of momentum. So once again, we just apply this formula. And uh, we haven't found what the expected value of p squared is, but since it's given to us, we'll just, no one's going to stop us from using this result directly. So I'll just substitute this in. So in the next video, we'll find out why the expected value of p squared is indeed equal to this term. And uh, just now, we also found that the expected value of p is equal to 0, so I can just substitute 0 over here. So this is just equal to the square root of a times h bar squared. So that's just equal to h bar times the square root of a. So this is the standard deviation of momentum.